Hi everybody, uh, this is Ron, and today is, I think, May the 28th. Uh, I can't, well, let me see, I can, I can cheat right quick here and take a look. Sorry about that. Um, if I get my phone to turn on. Uh, it is May 28th, at about 8 o'clock in the evening, we're in Sussex County, New Jersey. And uh, what we're doing is we are doing flow bench testing. Oops, golly, okay. That's the, the flow bench, the super flow. All right, so you guys can see the numbers there. The SF1020SB. And there is a grooved throttle body. Let me turn on my light here. That's what I have it for. See, there's a grooved throttle body. And uh, here's Mr. Holler, by the way. Just care to say hello to everybody out there? Land. <laughs> it's a, my little light helps out, doesn't it? It makes you feel like you're yeah, on stage? Yeah, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> See, but I mean that way. <laughs> those are his keys. It's not mine. Oh yeah, those are mine. Don't touch them. And his. That's my Gator made. Yeah, the, uh, the, he almost lost a finger earlier. All right. Anyway, this this is the uh, oh, this is the, uh, the 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 testing results. So what we did was we set it up on uh, various percentage levels. You can see all those down through there, right? And uh, what Mike did. Well, would you care to explain what you did, Mike? Okay. Well, what I did was I found out what the idle TPS voltage would be with the 5 volt power supply and then what the wide open throttle voltage would be and I broke no, it no, down it into a percentage oh, of throttle angle. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're looking at high resolution at the near closed throttle angle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up through 15%. Then from 15 we jump to 18, 20 and then it's 5% the whole way up to wide open throttle. And then that gives us... Uh, a before and an after comparison. We're going to be trying some other cool things and you know I don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet but we're going to be trying different things on something that can be thrown away just in case it doesn't work. <laughs> but uh, we got vehicles in line and mm. let's just say that I have access to some equipment that Ron started drilling over and there's going to be some <laughs> data coming out. There's going to be some data coming out. All right. All right. So uh, can you say anything that you've, you've seen? I mean, we're, we're almost through the test, but the machine keeps getting warm. So we're, we're almost through with the, well, the next set will be our yeah, last round. Yeah, you can look right here. The motor temperature is still almost 176 degrees. That's 175.9. And around 190, it starts kicking out over here. You can see it says, warning, motors are hot. So have to keep letting it cool down. Mm -hmm. But what we're, what we're doing is we're doing uh, a comparison before and after. And what I expected, not speaking on behalf of Ron, because mm -hmm. I don't know what he was thinking, but what mm -hmm. I was thinking is that as soon as you got past that groove, now you have a larger cross-sectional surface area. Mm -hmm. That means that flow should go through the roof, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say. That's not quite what we're seeing here. And um, I'm going to process it, do a couple more tests, uh -huh. see what's going on. Uh -huh. But what I was most concerned with is once you get past like 40% throttle opening, um, is it hypothetically possible that because of the altered fluid dynamics, we're actually getting an increase in volumetric efficiency going through that throttle plate? Uh -huh. In other words, are we getting more flow into the engine just because that groove is there? Now, I do, know, I do know, I was playing, I'm a turbo guy, right? Yeah. And um, I played around with some other throttle bodies from the factory. They had little, mm -hmm. look like ocean waves in them. Right. And someone sent me one that he wanted bored out. He wanted to get rid of those stupid obtrusions there, the, the, the ocean waves. And so I said, all right, fine. But I, I flowed it before and I flowed it after. The flow went up. Oh, I'm sorry, the flow went down after I bored it out. Mm -hmm. Cross-sectional surface area was increased when I mm. did the boring bar down through there. Made it just a straight pipe, but it actually lost flow. So you made it bigger and, and the it flow went down. it worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I made it bigger and it flowed worse. It, but what it taught me was that, 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 that there's, there's uh, something called helpful turbulence, uh, beneficial turbulence. Right, right. And uh, uh, what, what I wanted to do on here for my own personal is find out what kind of helpful turbulence the group mm -hmm. could add. Mm -hmm. Once you're so far past it that logic mm -hmm. and, and reasoning says it shouldn't be doing anything. Mm -hmm. And what we are finding on here is that we're getting up into throttle angles. Um, this, this is the before. So well, well so like right here, this is 50% throttle angle. So we got 50%, that's the TPS voltage that equates to it. And we have three columns we're testing at 10 inches. 25 inches and 40 inches water column pressure. Whenever you see standard flow numbers, it's 28 inches. So 
Why 25? Because there's a real slick formula that allows you to convert cubic feet per minute of flow into horsepower. So that means that at 25 inches, the difference in flow, I can actually put a horsepower number on. This How way. sweet is that? Right. So anyhow, get back to 50% flow here. Um, 2.60 volts on the TPS. At 10 inches, our after number is 50. 8.8 yet our before number was 56.8 now that's not a whole lot but again we're only flowing at 10 inches now let's shift over one more to the 25 inch column we are flowing 92.1 after but only 89.3 before now while we're over here looking at this one our before number on 40 inches was 97.5 and then our after numbers is 113 so when the engine starts screaming and you start getting the air being sucked in, you know that's uh, that's that's quite a bit of difference. So is it would this indicate to you that there is definitely reason to believe that there would be more horsepower produced at the higher RPMs as well? Yeah, at the higher flow levels. I mean, you know, 50% throttle angle, you're past the group. Yeah. You know, and and and, and the, the description that you gave online about it backpacking down in there in mm -hmm. the corner and then spewing back out again. Mm -hmm. It, it, it goes beyond the way you have it drawn out. If this if this is accurate, mm -hmm. then it goes beyond even where you reasoned it should be happening. It's mm -hmm. it's going even further. No, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right. Well, then, shall we get back to the testing, Mike? Yeah, our motor temps down to 166.7. All right. So, guys, there you have. It. I'm turning the light off so it doesn't blind you there. Uh, maybe you, you should be able to see me, okay? And uh, we're going to finish this up. Uh, I won't. There will be no more video on this. Uh, and what we're going to do is going to wait until we have the graph produced and have something more professional to share with folks. And so what we'll say is uh, we're doing what it takes. And we got to give a great big old thanks to Mike and the Eco Scepter crew. Ecoceptors. Ecoceptors. You'll hear more about that later. God bless y'all richly and warmly, and as always, remember to smile for a stranger today. You will both be glad you did. Won't they, Mike? I would. <laughs> you always smile. <laughs>